I'm introducing another new feature for owners of my MoGraph FX Blender add-on. The ability to trigger animations, materials, and physics with an animated object. Based entirely on proximity, it really will let you offset just about any keyframe property, even when particles and smoke start. Let's go over how to use the new trigger feature. So the first thing we need to do is just make a simple animation on this cube. Let's go a little bit into the future and set the size down to say 0 0.2. I will make them start at zero. I wanna make this kind of pop and then snap back into place. So I'm going to make it pop just a little on the X. So it'll go a little longer and then maybe seven frames later, it'll go back to 0 0.2. So let's see how that's looking. Whoop. Okay, cool. Another thing is, <clears throat> we can also animate materials with my add-on very well, so I'm going to make this start with an emission of five, and I'm going to give it a nice color that'll mesh a bit with the purple. So it'll start at five, and then by the time it's done with its animation, it'll be at zero. So I'm just going to insert a keyframe there. And now we have one animated object, and we can duplicate this, to make some sort of grid. Shift D, Y, minus 0.4. There. Now they won't overlap at all. And I can hit Shift R to repeat that action. And now I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to move it on the Z by 0.4. And do 10. Okay, so I've got a 10 by 10 wall, and this is the base for everything I'm going to do. I'm going to toss these guys into a collection. New collection. Doesn't matter what it's named. Now that we have something to work with, we can figure out how this new trigger system works. Let's add a sphere. It's a bit big. This will give us a sphere by cutting a size in half. It will have a radius of 0 0.5. And I'm going to set a keyframe on frame zero. Don't worry about the fact that those are spawning in. This is what we're going to trigger. For this first animation, only those that actually cross the path of the sphere will get triggered. So I'm going to go forward to say frame 100. I'm going to bring this up and here. So I've got it set to pass through all of our cubes. And we're going to see really quickly how this works. My entire animate and offset section works with collections. So we just pick our collection too. And now that collection is targeted for all of these tools. So we're going to look at trigger animations. We're going to select our sphere. We're going to leave these checked for now. We do want material animation because we have an animated material. So now if I run trigger animations, it's going to look at this entire collection and the position of this object for every frame. And we can see that as the object passes over each of the cubes, they are triggered. Their material and scale animations are both affected. But we have other options to play with. One thing that we can do, and this is really cool and powerful, is we are able to say, I want you to ignore X and Y. So it will treat every single object as if they have the same X and Y along with our trigger object. So if I run it again, this time it will only look at the sphere's Z distance. So as the sphere gets higher, each of the rows is triggered. And that is super cool because offset animations cannot do this. You can if you use the every X, but for a more complex model, uh, that's not going to happen. So let's look at something more complicated. Now I want to show you how to do a hybrid of a couple other things I did. I just have a Suzanne here. I'm going to throw a subdivision surface on her. This is going to increase the face count because the monkey only has 500 faces. I'm going to go ahead and apply that. Now before we have a bunch of objects in the scene, I'm going to show you the other thing I'm going to do. I'm going to add a sphere. I'm going to scale it down to 0.2 and I'm going to bring it down here like this and I'm going to set a keyframe, but I'm only going to set the location on the Z and about 
20 frames later, I'm going to set it again. Let's make that 15. Our ball just goes up and down and we're going to copy these. So I'm going to hit Shift D, X, 30. And now if I hit Shift R, I'll repeat all of those keyframes. And I'm gonna take this out to around frame 300. And now all we want is to adjust our X position just a little bit. Maybe bring it here and hit X and then come over here and bring it across. So it will stop just a little to the left or right of her ear there. And now let's see how that looks. It looks like it's crossing the majority of the mesh. We can fix the rest with range. So with that set, we can separate our Suzanne. Let's put her in a collection, push M, new collection, collection two, tab into edit mode and hit F3, edge split. Now if we hit P, we can separate all those faces out into loose parts. Leave edit mode, object, set origin, origin to center a mass to get these faces recentered. Now, if we had forward 20 frames and push I, scale, go back 20, S, zero, I, scale. Now, every face of Suzanne will spawn in one at a time and we can now trigger this so we might look at the material maybe do the glow while you grow thing that i'm fond of change the color keyframe emission and maybe go forward a little longer than it takes to grow and change it to zero save and now if we open our animate offset and curve tool collection two trigger animations pick our sphere what we want to do here is ignore the Y distance. Maybe add a two frame offset after the ball passes, give it a little time to get out of the way and tell the script the material is animated and we want to offset it. Now this distance looks a, a bit big. So I'm going to start with 0.25 and give that a try. Ah, oh, it missed just a couple pieces. So I can just quickly undo that. We know that it missed right here, just that one spot. So how close was it? Hmm. So I'm just going to roll back and change the distance to 0.3, which should probably cover it. Having a look, we got the whole mesh to form this time. That is great. So this will be a neat animation. Uh, on my original, I actually added a particle system to it. You can do that. It's really not hard. Under velocity, I set normal to zero. And I gave them about half the velocity of the original. And I did a texture, changing this to blend, coordinate, strand, particle, influence, uncheck general time, pick size. And if you go to colors, use color ramp. The black will be where they're zero. We want them to fade out, but we can also make them very slightly fade in if we like. So we can go here and change this color just to zero, zero. Add a new point, make this white. So now they'll grow at the beginning and they'll shrink at the end. We don't want them to live very long though. And all you need is an object to use for your particle. I just did an icosphere with a blue glow because I have no imagination. And pick your icosphere. I made it very small, 0.25, 0.25. And um, I did bake it, which takes a second, but I'll do that and you won't have to wait. Particle bakes when you have 7,000 objects are kind of painful. So if you do this, do the particles first. So I will go ahead and render this. Oh, wait, before I do that, let me show you a new feature. I'm going to select all of the Suzanne faces. Right click the collection, select objects, and go down to utilities. If you've ever dealt with thousands of objects, then you know that sometimes the building BVH takes longer than the render time. Well, we can tell these objects not to exist in the render until the frame they're triggered. So this will keyframe every object to be revealed on trigger frame. So if we save render, you'll notice at the top, there aren't many objects in the BVH, nothing's triggered. They will gradually come in, so only the final frames where they all exist will be difficult. So this is the result we got from that. I actually like my original better. I'll show it next. 
I think that the reason it's better is purely because of camera angle, environment, and I made this Suzanne out of tons of voxels. It's easy to see how very different it can be. I want to show you another way you can use the add-on and in particular getting unique movement for the animations. I just have the basic cube from the first scene with a couple minor alterations. Now, I'm going to use the particle stand-in tool. I've got my cube set to 0.04. You will find particle stand-in under utilities. And if you add an object, we're going to pick a Suzanne. So I'm gonna bring this Suzanne up, scale her to mm, double the size. So let's look at our sphere. We're gonna add a spiral. And you can do that by going to Edit Preferences and making sure that Add Curve Extra Objects is enabled. It's a built-in add-on. So Add Curve Curve Spirals Archimedean. I've got some default settings here. We can increase the amount of turns if we need. I want a bit more height growth. Yeah, the radius growth looks good. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get out of here and pick my sphere. I'm going to head to Object Constraint Properties. If we then pick Follow Path for our sphere, we can pick the spiral. And as long as it's at 0, 0, 0, it'll automatically line up with that spiral always. So let's bring down the size of our sphere a little bit. And we will pick Follow Curve. Here's the thing about this. Um, the offset, we're going to hit 0. And we're going to go way in the future and put minus 100. That will ensure it goes all the way to the end. So you'll see that it spins. And man, it's spinning fast. So let's make this a little bit longer because that was something I didn't like about my first one. So it'll sort of start super fast, but then it'll do laps a little slower. Now, since we're going to be using range, we want this thing to go through Suzanne's head. And we can see that it's not going to hit her jaw here. So if we hit RX minus 15, and we bring the sphere, uh, bring the curve over on the Y, bring it up. Now it is sure to hit, now it is sure to hit every Z level. So we only have two more steps to take here, which is cool. We're going to pick Suzanne as our particle stand-in. And we want particle size to be twice what we have for our cube. And that is 0 0.04 when it's grown. So we're going to do 0 0.08. We're not using fill. This is gonna create a lot of objects. So I'm going to hit create particle stand-in. And this is making an all vertices version of the Suzanne model. Now this does add a particle system. As you can see, if you pick the particle stand-in, on frame one, it makes a bunch of particles and it makes a particle stand-in. We're not going to use that because we want these to be individually animated objects. So we'll just go over to the particle system, hit the minus button, it's gone. Okay, so you can see what this particle stand-in has done. It is a 3D representation of Suzanne made of vertices. And we have another tool that can take advantage of this. Spawn on mesh. If we select our particle stand in, and now we pick our little baby cube, it will put one of those at every single vertex on this mesh. We don't want keyframes. So we're just going to save and run the script. And we'll see that if we go forward 60 frames, they will all be spawned in and hopefully not overlapping at all. They are perfectly positioned as you can see. Okay, if you've been following along, then you know where this is headed. We're going to select our collection for animation, and we are going to go to trigger animations. We will pick our sphere, and we are going to ignore X and Y. So as this crosses all the various planes of Z, it will bring entire rows in at one time. We have material animation checked, and we're good to go. So it seems to have worked, and if you were paying attention earlier, you know the next step. We have 11,000 objects here, so what we need to do is use trigger frame to keyframe these objects' visibility. 
So we just need to select the collection and hit reveal on trigger time. This really will cut the time to render this entire sequence probably to about a third of what it would normally take. So I think it's time for me to render this bad boy. So let's see how this turns out. I could show you a couple results from this method. In this one, I told it to animate rigid bodies and then I told them to stop being animated rigid bodies several hundred frames in the future. It's cool how the rows fall off one by one. While working on this video, I also added the ability to do this with collections. Now this did not turn out, but it does prove that every particle was causing these to spawn when it was in range. And this is the one you saw me working on last. This update is now available on Blender Market. Just go grab it from the download section. If you haven't bought my add-on yet, give it a try. I've got tutorials that teach you how to use it here, and it's currently on sale for 20% off, probably for at least about a week.